Hi there, and welcome back to Simon Says. Now today we're going to be talking a little bit more about that water tank level sensor that I've created to measure my tank levels. And we're going to talk a little bit about this guy. Uh, this is the Shelly Uni. I'm going to show you how to wire it up. And we're then going to go into a little bit of detail about how to actually get this up and running on your Home Assistant ensigns. So let's have a look at this Shelly Uni. Now the cool thing about this device is that it is not in a box, but it is protected from moisture and dust. They've sprayed on a special coating onto it. Um, so when it's working outdoors like mine is, it's in a closed pump, but still very, very humid and not a great environment for electronics, but it is protected. It's got uh, components on both sides of the board. So you can see it's got the processor on the back there and we've got some more components on the front there. Um, so basically the way this works, it's got a reset button. So if you need to reset, you can just press that. And then we've got all of the cables over on this side, which can be conveniently plugged out if need be. Now, the first thing I really like about the Shelly Uni is the external antenna. So in my case, uh, my pump unit is about 25 meters away from the house with the router. So a normal ESP32 that I tried in this environment, it wouldn't reach properly and kept falling over. So having this external antenna, which is quite big already, works much better. Um, you could even plug on a larger antenna and increase the range for that product. So it'd be quite interesting to try that and see what sort of a range you can get from the Shelly Uni. So if we look at the wiring on this unit, very, very simple. The first two, unit, uh, first two wires are your voltage supply, anywhere from 12 volts up to 24 volts DC. You can also do AC voltage on it. So uh, positive to positive, negative to negative, really simple. Um, the next wire is your voltage input, analog input. So this white one over here, that's gonna accept the voltage input from my sensor, okay? So basically you just connect that up and it can go up to 30 volts, I believe. So it's got quite a, lot, a wide range. I would suggest if you can get the 0 to 10 volt um, sensor, it's gonna give you a little more granularity. The 0 to 5, I'm only, get, only getting up to 1.6 volts at a maximum. So I think the zero to 10 would be really good. So that's your analog input. Um, the next one, the next three cables are for the uh, sensor inputs. So this can sense either three temperature sensors or one temperature and humidity sensor. So currently use, I'm using a Dallas sensor on my one and that's working really well because it's waterproof. I can stick it outside the casing. When it was in the pump house, it was getting very hot in the sun but I've stuck it outside, it's waterproof, and it gives me a reading. So those are easy to connect up. Once again, they actually supply power. And I'm not quite sure whether it's 3.3 or 5 volts that it's giving. So I'll need to actually connect my multimeter up and find that out. But that's your power out. So we've got the, the four, the yellow one is the positive, and the green, the six one, is the negative. And then the one in the center, the blue one is our data. So basically the data is going to come back from the sensor and that is going to power your temperature, humidity or three temperature sensors. Um, the last two outputs on this are switch binary switch inputs. So effectively you run a positive to the switch. The other side of the switch gets connected to either the brown or the orange and that will then come up as a sensor inside your Shelly app or in your home assistant. And basically it will give you an on or an off based on those two. Um, on the out other side of the board, we've got these two potential free outputs, okay? So what you would do here is you would connect the power to your device. You would then connect the device to one side of the switch and the other side would go to the negative of the supply. Basically, always remember it is limited to 100 milliamps. If you go over that, you're gonna burn this device out. But really good. So you've got two inputs, two outputs, your sensing and your analog input. So yeah, Shelly Uni, very, very useful. I'm gonna be doing lots of projects with this. So we've connected our Shelly Uni up to the Shelly app. There's a link in the description below showing you how to do that. 
Um, once you've done that and you come back to your Home Assistant, you'll now see that we've got a notification. So let's click on that. It's telling us that we've got a new device discovered. This is the awesome thing about Shelly devices, automatic discovery. So we go along there, click on that, and you can see Shelly Uni has been discovered. So we go configure. Basically gives us a little bit of a warning about battery devices. There we go, there's our Shelly Uni. So now I'm gonna select that that is installed in the garden outside. I'm gonna go finish. And that is literally how easy it is. If we now go down to our Shelly over here, you'll see that we've got the Shelly Uni. If we click on that, we can see the device and we can see the entities that are showing there. So you can really see that we've got um, a voltage of 1.5 volts coming in. That is the voltage from the sensor. And I've got a Dallas temperature sensor that I've connected up to the three sensor wires inside the Shelly. Um, there's another two entities. Um, those are those two inputs that I was showing. Those are by default disabled by Home Assistant. You just need to go in and enable them if you want to use them. So you just go here to advanced settings, enable, and that will take about 30 seconds and it will then enable those, um, those binary input sensors. Here are the two output control sensors so we could control outdoor lights or whatever we wanted to do with that. Just remember you need a relay because it's limited to 100 milliamps through the Shelly Uni. So next up we're now going to go into our dashboard. Uh, we're going to go edit. And we go to this little uh, grid that I've got over here. I'm going to edit that and I'm now going to add a new gauge in here. So we search for a gauge. There we go. And then I'm going to select Uni because I know it's my Shelly Uni and I want my voltage, the ADC input. So there we go. Uh, we can now scroll down. Now I'm going to set this to minimum maximum. So I'm going to set to minimum as zero and maximum to 1.6 as I know that's the maximum voltage when the tank is full. Okay, if I want to put a little gauge on that, that's quite cool. And we'll put in severity as well. So we'll say, for example, um, let's go for green if it is um, 1.3, uh, yellow if it is 0 0.9, and red if it is 0 0.5. Let's save that, and there we go. You can now see that we've got our tank gauge. Let's just go back and give that a name. So we'll just go in there, we'll select that one, and we will give it a name as uh, water level. Save that, and there we go. We've now got our tank water level. We've got some severities. You can see as it starts getting empty, it's gonna give me some warnings. And based off this, we can now go and create some automations, but I'll leave that for the next one.